Hi, I'm Donna Fields, and I'm going to be talking about teaching history, culture, and the society in the classroom with visual cultural identifiers. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the talk. More and more, we have this responsibility to teach it consciously about the history and the cultures of different societies in the classroom. And we can do this in a fun way, both for ourselves and for our students. For instance, let's take clothes. This is a traditional wedding dress and suit in Chinese culture. And they're almost always red. Why red? Well, red it is a favorite in Chinese culture because it keeps evil spirits away, they say, and it brings good luck. And it always has dragons or phoenixes on it. Now, what is the symbol of a dragon? What does the dragon symbolize in the Chinese culture? Well, we do a little research and we find out the dragon symbolize power and especially keeping away rainfall, hurricanes and floods, that sort of thing. So dragons are very important in the Chinese culture. What about red? Why is red so important in the Chinese culture? Well, there's a legend about this horrible man that was going to eat all of the Chinese, but someone <laughs> waved a red flag in front of it and it went away. So now red is very important in the Chinese culture and it actually means good luck to them. It's actually forbidden at funerals because it's a color of happiness, but it's celebrated everywhere else. And then of course we want to know where China is and what it's surrounded by, which countries it's surrounded by, and what the influence is. It has on other countries, what the countries have on them. So just starting with the clothes, we find out enormous amount of information. Okay, what if we talk about food? Fondue. Let's start with fondue. Well, where is fondue from? Well, fondue is from Switzerland. It was started because the Swiss wanted to promote more cheese. There's this myth that it started with the, the shepherds, and they didn't have anything else to eat up in the mountains, and so they ate fondue, but it turns out to be not true. But what does Switzerland have to do with the rest of the world? Well, Switzerland is part of Europe. But does that mean that Switzerland is part of the European Union? Well, it's actually not part of the European Union, and why? So what happened before and what's happening now? Lots of information just from fondue, food. We can go to stamps. We don't use stamps so much anymore because of all the electronic mail, but it's still fascinating information. This one is a bay in Bermuda. Well, for goodness sake, where is Bermuda? Well, Bermuda is off the coast of the United States. But why is there a British king on the postage stamp? Well, it turns out that Bermuda is a British colony. Now, how did it get to be a British colony? It's something to really explore. And all of this just from a stamp. We can use currency as a starting point to, to research culture and study it and learn about it. This is a Russian bill. It has Peter the Great and this woman is actually Mother Russia. Well, who is Mother Russia for goodness sake? Well, she symbolizes the spirit of collectivity, we find out. And who was Peter the Great? What influence did he have on Russia? How long did he rule? What was life in Russia like before and after? Why is this city called St. Petersburg? Was this a good thing? Was this a negative thing? What did Peter the Great have to do with this? And remember, this is just all starting from a, a bill, a currency. So in actuality, we're not going to be looking at any of those. We have other cultural identifiers, and they're really exciting. So the talk is going to be presenting ideas like this that you can use, visual cultural identifiers that are springboards for studying cultures and, and their, their symbols and their way of life. It's going to be very exciting. I look forward to seeing you there.